This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Direct us, our Father, in Jesus' name as we study today. To God be the glory, through Jesus Christ, the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world, manifest in the fullness of time, born of a virgin, laid his life down willingly, that we might have life. Thank you, Father, in his name. Amen. On the last broadcast, I read verses 11 through 16. I read them again. And I'll make a few remarks, and then we'll move on to the next section that gives to us the account of the Battle of Armageddon and the Great Supper that God will provide for the beast and the fowls. Now listen to this. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it, that is, with the sword, he should smite the nations, and he hath, shall rule them with a rod of iron, that, and treadeth the winepress of the fierce wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now I said, there is no need of anyone not seeing and understanding who this person is. None other, certainly none other, than the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into the world, laid his life down, conquered the world, the flesh, the devil, death, hell, and the grave, and he sits today at the right hand of the majesty, awaiting that hour when he will be crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. You'll reign with him if you're born again, and if you're not born again, You'll be roasting in the lake of fire. You say, I don't believe that. That's all right. That's your privilege, my dear friend. If you do not believe the word of God, then that is your privilege. I believe what the Bible teaches. And if you're born again, you'll be caught up in the rapture. And if you're not born again, you'll be left behind. And if you die without Christ, you'll spend eternity in the lake of fire. Now the next verse, and I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Now I want you to watch this. That ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses. And of them that sit on them, that is, those people who sit on the Lord, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now, we have here two great armies. Number one, the white horse rides out in verse 11, white horse, and the rider who is king of kings, and that's Jesus. Number two, we have a great army led by the beast. And of course, he declares war on Jerusalem, the saints of God, and the king of kings. Now, we read here that an angel standing in the sun. Could that be possible? With God, all things are possible. Don't ever put a question mark around anything that God Almighty has anything to do with. Don't ever ask questions, how, why, just say, in the beginning, God, I believe the rest. 
And so the angel cried out and he said to all the buzzards and the eagles and the birds and all the beasts, he said, I want you to come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Now, we read and we discussed it several days, and you remember, if you've been listening, we've been discussing Revelation verse by verse for many months. In fact, this whole year, we started on January the 2nd, I believe it was, and we've been studying every every, every day uh, since that time. Now, if you were listening back under a few weeks ago, I read to you in Revelation chapter 14, I read concerning Armageddon. Now, we have the vision there. Here we have the battle. If you don't mind, turn please to Revelation 14, 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time is come for thee to reap. The time is come, time has finally arrived to reap. Now, the devil has had his way for a long time. And wickedness has been in this earth and has been multiplying. Evil men and seducers so acts worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. There is no better until Jesus comes and puts down wickedness and brings in righteousness. Man will never do it. It'll be Jesus who will accomplish this. And so he said, Thrust in thy sickle and reap. The time has come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came down from the altar which had power over fire. And he cried a loud voice, crying to him that hath the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Now you remember I read just a moment ago in the 19th chapter that this writer will, will tread the wine press of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Now listen what will happen. And the wine press was trodden without the city. The city of Jerusalem will be, uh, that is, it will be surrounded by the enemy and the devil will be the leader in the person of the beast and they will cry out, destroy the righteous, and annihilate the righteous, and lay low the city. And of course, God Almighty will fight on the side of the saints. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even under the horses' bridles, for the space of a thousand six hundred furloins. And I pointed out to you, when we studied the battle of Armageddon there, I pointed out that this will be the distance of 200 miles in the valley of Armageddon or in the valley of Megiddo. Now, listen to this, if you will, and you'll see that we not only read about this in the New Testament, but it was prophesied in the Old. It will be a time of which the earth will be soaked with blood. Read Isaiah 34, 1 through 8. I won't take the time to read these eight verses but you read Isaiah 34, verses 1 through 8. The earth will be soaked with blood. And the blood will run to the horse's bridles, which of course will be between 5 and 6 feet deep for a space of 200 miles. Now you say, Brother Green, do you actually believe that? Yes, I actually believe that. I certainly do. I believe it. Because the Bible teaches it. And if I didn't believe it, then I wouldn't know what part of the Bible to believe and what part not to believe. I read to you the other day, all Scripture is given by inspiration. All Scripture is God-breathed. And I believe all of it from Genesis to Revelation. And so when the Bible tells me that the blood will run to the horse's bridles, I believe it means it says exactly what it means. And I believe it means exactly what it says. Now then, let's, let's see what we have here. And let me just try to settle down and give you this picture and then ask you if you are prepared to meet God and if you are ready for that day when Jesus will come 
and receive his saints, and then this earth will become a literal hell for approximately seven years, and at that time, Jesus will return with the saints to tread the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Back to Revelation 19. The angel is standing in the sun, and he cried out to all the fowls, come to the great supper. Now, they will eat the flesh. Now watch it. Flesh. F-L-E-S-H. This will be a literal battle. Literal soldiers, literal horses will be slain. They'll eat the flesh of kings. Kings will be killed. Captains will be killed. Mighty men and horses. The flesh of horses. And them that sit on the horses and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Now, the beast and the armies of the beast declare war, make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Now, of course, that is referring to and speaking of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is very clear. The beast will make War against the Lamb of God. You remember the devil first declared war on God back yonder in eternity. And we have the record in in, in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. We have the record where the anointed cherub, Lucifer, uh, led the angels to, some of the angels, not all of them, but some of them to believe that they could overthrow God. And so they declared war on God. And they made an all-out attempt to overthrow God and take God's throne and take God's kingdom. And Lucifer desired to exalt his throne above the throne of God, above the stars of God. He was not willing to be subordinate to God, but he wanted to be above God. And so God cast him out. And Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, he's making another attempt to overthrow God. And this is not the last one. There will be another. And you remember several weeks ago, we compared the battle of Gog and Magog with the battle of Armageddon. And we find that record, of course, in the next chapter, in verses 7, 8, and 9. We read about the battle of Gog and Magog. Well, now that's another battle. Armageddon is not the battle of Gog and Magog. They are not one and the same. So this occurs at the end of the tribulation, but Satan will make another all-out attempt to overthrow God at the end of the millennium. And then that will be the final battle, and Satan will be put into the lake. Now here, we read in the very next verse that the beast, the beast that wrought miracles, and of course the false prophet, These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burned with fire and brimstone. Now, the beast and the false prophet will be put into the lake of fire at the end of the tribulation before the beginning of the millennium. Satan will be bound, as we'll see in the next chapter, and he'll be chained for a thousand years. He'll be put in chains in hell and sealed for a thousand years. Then at the end of the thousand years... There will be another gigantic, all-out attempt on the part of Satan to overthrow God. But he'll be overthrown, and that will be the final attempt, because he, of course the beast and the false prophet, will already be there. But Satan will be put into the lake, and the satanic trinity will not have another opportunity to declare war on God and God's Christ and God's saints. Now listen, beloved. Let me tell you something. You and I are living in the most glorious days. Now, wait a minute, Preacher Green. Wait a minute, Brother Green. Wait a minute. Did you say that we're living in glorious days with murder and rape and assault and dope and drunkenness? Millions of alcoholics in America multiplied millions around the world and probably several million who dope. You mean to tell me and homes wrecked and broken? You mean to tell me these are glorious days? Listen, beloved. The darkest hour is just before the dawn. Now, one of these days, and I don't know the day and I don't know the hour. No one else does. One of these days, Jesus will appear in the clouds in the air just above us. 
And everything that is going on today, everything, all of the deception, the lying, the stealing, the murdering, the drunkenness, the doping, everything, broken homes, broken lives, everything that is occurring today. And you just pick up your paper, morning paper or evening paper, and the whole front page and all through the paper is stained with blood blood. And this is the day when evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse and worse. And they're saying peace and safety. And the Bible teaches us clearly that when all these things come to pass, while the fig tree is budding and all of these things occur, lift up your heads. No man knows the day, no man knows the hour, but when these things occur, he is at the door. Now, beloved, I say these are the most glorious days because we are surely without a doubt. I'm not afraid to say this. I know I'll meet it at the judgment. I know that I will be uh, rewarded for my stewardship. And if I am unfaithful in my ministry then I'll lose my reward. But if I'm faithful in my ministry, then I'll be rewarded. And I know that I'll face what I'm going to say. But I'm not afraid. I do not hesitate to make the statement that the answer, and the only answer, the only possible answer to all the ills in the world today is the second coming of Jesus Christ. I believe the American government is the greatest government on the face of the earth. I cannot tell you, and you don't know how much of what we've heard in the last weeks is true. I don't know how guilty our leaders are. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is what I've read. And all I know is what men have testified. God knows who's guilty and God knows who is not guilty. But what I'm saying all that for is to say this. The, the American government is the greatest government on the face of the earth. But the world and nations have lost and are losing respect for our great government and our great nation. Now, I believe America is the only stronghold of Christianity on earth. Now, there are many Christians in England and Russia and China. Yes, there are many Christians in China and many Christians in Cuba. Yes, but I believe that America is the greatest Christian nation on the face of the earth. And with all the sin and ungodliness that we have and all of the wickedness that abounds, how can Jesus delay his coming much longer? I pray with John the Beloved, even so come, even so come quickly. Come today, Jesus. It'd suit me fine if Jesus should come this very moment. Father, those who are not ready, convict them deeply and save them now. For Jesus' sake, through his blood. Amen.